That's it. That is officially the last draw for me. I am no longer going to recommend to pretty much anybody Western Digital NAS drives, period. That is honestly the very last straw I'm willing to accept from this company because in the past just three years, they've had numerous anti-consumer behavior that has been really bad. And this one right here is probably the worst. Western Digital has started using their Western Digital Device Analytics. Essentially, it's a very similar to a smart test, except it's kind of done by them. So the same thing that Seagate does with their Seagate Iron Wolf test. To start marking drives on a Synology NAS as warning if they have been powered on for only three years. Three years. So now, if you have Western Digital drives, pretty much any of their NAS drives, it says the Western Digital Purple, Red Plus, and Red Pros. If you've got Western Digital Device Analytics, which you absolutely should disable in DSM, if you have those enabled, at the three-year mark of your NAS drives being powered on, they will now permanently be marked as warning in DSM. That means that if there's actually an issue, like, I don't know, maybe you start having uncorrected sectors going up to 100 and it actually might be failing, you're gonna have no idea because Western Digital has decided that their NAS drives apparently cannot handle being on for three years. That's it. That is all it is, is three years of power on hours, which is absolutely nothing to a NAS drive. And honestly, this is the last straw for me for this company. People who know this channel know that I don't really spend a lot of time just bashing other products. That's not really what I like doing. If I don't like a product, I tend to just not really review it or talk about it. I really try not to be like a, just a negative person on the internet because I feel like it's already kind of flooded with that. But this is one of those cases where I feel like you have to call the company out for it because this is not the first thing like that they've done. Many people will also remember about three years ago now, Western Digital started shipping SMR drives as NAS drives. SMR drives are not good for NAS and they're not good for RAID because they have really, really, really slow performance at random times. And when you've got a RAID, if one drive has horribly slow performance, the entire volume is gonna be operating at that speed. And so having an SMR drive in a RAID is a horrible idea. And yet Western Digital silently started shipping these cheaper drives as Western Digital RED drives. And so it's like, why would you do that? You have a lineup of drives that are cheaper and they're fine as a desktop drive where you're only ever really reading massive amounts of data to it generally and you, you really don't notice a slowdown because it's just like an external cheap hard drive. They have lineups for that, but they started trying to put that in their NAS drives even though people are buying NAS drives to put in a NAS. And so with those fundamental issues, there was no reason to ever put them in a NAS and yet Western Digital, without telling anybody, and also doing some very shady stuff where they were kind of hiding it and did not give a direct list of ones that are SMR or CMR, started just shipping those until people found out because they were having a ton of issues. ZFS boxes were especially hit by this because the resilvering process on a ZFS pool could sometimes say, hey, that's having an issue. And one calculation took over a year to rebuild tons and tons of issues that could have been alleviated by not shipping cheap SMR drives as a NAS drive. So they added that, they fixed that, they started documenting that, and now they're doing this. So that is just something that really bothers me in my core because it's one of those things that is just anti-consumer. It is really making e-waste out of drives that should last at least twice that long without thinking twice about them. All right. So before we can go too much further in this video, I need to kind of give my biases and where I'm coming from. Nobody has paid me for this video. No company has a clue that I'm making this. There are only three people who know I'm making this video at all, myself, my wife, and actually one of my clients who is the first person who I've seen have this issue. He emailed me and said, hey, uh, all my drives just went into warning mode. Western Digital says they've been powered on for too long and should probably be replaced. That's the first time I heard of this. Those are the only three people who know about this video. Nobody's paying for me or anything like that. I have gotten free hardware from Synology and I've gotten three free hard drives from Synology as their Synology drives. And then I've gotten free hard drives from Seagate, but indirectly through other companies. Seagate has never directly sent me them. A lot of companies partner with Seagate. 
I've spent way more money on Seagate hard drives than I've gotten in free Seagate hard drives, but I want to make that clear. I have gotten free Seagate hard drives, not directly from them, but just people who send me an ass that's fully built out. Just wanted to get that very clear all the way, though no money's changing hands for this video and nobody's gonna see it beforehand and nobody gets input beforehand or even know that it exists. All right, so now with all those disclaimers out of the way, I wanna go ahead and pull up pretty much the only post online that I found about this, and it should be a way bigger deal than this. So this is from about two months ago, which makes sense why I've not seen a ton of stuff online about it is because it looks like they just pushed this. And apparently what has happened is Western Digital Device Analytics has started flagging NAS drives, any of their Western Digital Purple, Red Plus, and Red Pros, as warning if they have been powered on for more than three years of power on hours. And that's it. It does not look at any of the smart tests. It does not look at re any reallocated sectors. It looks at nothing else other than the power on hours to go ahead and flag those devices. This is horrible because all it is doing is creating e-waste for perfectly good hard drives. So for those of you who don't really know, NAS drives are designed to run 24 seven. That's just why you buy a NAS drive is they're designed to run 24 seven and they generally have vibration sensors to keep harmonics from happening too easily when you've got a bunch of drives next to each other. They're designed to run 24 seven and three years is nothing in the lifetime of a hard drive, especially if you're getting NAS drives. And so if you look at the Backblaze annualized failures, they have things that have been running for 92 months and are fine. You can see that really, even with a lot of the drives that are 92 months old. So what is that? Over seven and a half years old, their annualized failure report is less than 1%. So you can see from this data, hard drives should be totally fine with three years of power on hours. That's only 36 months. And the majority of these are well, well, well over that. And the ones that are not like the 16s are just because drives have not existed that long to get those hours. It's one of those things that you do not need to worry about your NAS drives failing because they've been powered on for three years. The only thing that's running out is Western Digital's warranty. And my biggest problem with this is it actually worked. So this right here was his system where he powered it on and all of a sudden all of his drives went into warning mode. He immediately goes in and bought new Western Digital drives as he sent me the email just because, hey, it's his entire business on there. It's crucial for him. I totally get that. If something says warning, I'm going to go ahead and replace it just to make sure there's not fail. But that was just because Western Digital decided that, hey, three years, we can probably sell more hard drives by then, even though there's no reason to believe that these drives are failing. I have a huge issue with this. So now let's talk about how you can hopefully get around this if you have Western Digital drives already in your system. Essentially in DSM, unfortunately I cannot show these settings because, well, I do not have a Western Digital Drive with me. And what you should do is you go into Storage Manager, and then you go into HDD, SDD, and Settings right here. There should be a button in here somewhere that says, do you want to enable Western Digital Analytics? You are going to want to uncheck that. Smart tests should you have you covered. And so I would not recommend enabling that because there is no useful information from saying, hey, your drives have been powered on for three years. I'm just gonna set everything to warning so you don't realize that there's actually an issue coming. If this happens to you and they're already marked like that, I would sleep fine at night having those, but you're gonna to wanna to check your smart data fairly often just because now all of your warnings are gonna be watered down because you're in, all your drives are gonna show as warning. And I'm pretty sure it's gonna show your pool as warning as well. And it may even not allow you to use that drive to rebuild another actually failing drive because it has been marked. Because I also believe hot spares are going to be counting towards power on hours because they're kept spinning the entire time just so they don't basically fail as soon as you try to use them. And so what may happen is your hot spare may fail to actually rebuild your pool. I've not tested this, but it may not be allowed to rebuild your pool because Western Digital has marked it as warning. And I don't know if Synology will let you repair a pool with a drive marked as warning. Western Digital, please disable that. 
set it to seven years, set it to actually something that is realistic for, hey, this drive has been around for a while, or maybe set it to something that's actually useful like, hey, we have found that after X, Y, and Z smart tests show that these three parameters are getting high, then it might fail. You know, that would be useful for an extra test directly from Western Digital or Seagate. Instead, Western Digital is simply marking these as fail just because they've reached a certain threshold, which I really just cannot accept as normal business practice. So I guess this is the end of my rant. I really just am not going to be able to recommend Western Digital drives for any NASAs anytime soon unless this gets cleaned up. It would be different if this was the very first issue that had come up in the last couple of years, but it's simply not. And so I really hope that Western Digital will push an update that changes this to a much more useful thing because marking drives as dying just because they are three years old is only producing e-waste and basically corporate profits. And I just cannot sit well with that behavior going on. All right, well, that's going to be it for this video. Um, please put down in the comments below any of your experiences with this. And if you were able to get that unmarked, I've not found a way to do that yet. And from my experience in DSM, it can be very, very, very tough to unmark drives. Please, Western Digital, remove this. Synology, you could also remove that just because this is blatant bad behavior by a hard drive manufacturer that is exploiting the tests within DSM to just try to make people buy more drives. All right, that's going to be it for this. Thank you all. Hopefully this gets resolved and I will be updating the comments below if this does get resolved. Thank you. All right, bye.